Hey guys, um, I'm sorry I'm talking quiet, but my child is sleeping and I don't want to wake him up. Um, okay, I had a vision last night. I, um, you know, usually when, before I go to sleep at night, I, I seek for Jesus. And last night I did the same thing. Sometimes he's actually right there. Um, and... Uh, but usually he's not, and I have to look for him. So last night I, I was looking for him, and the first thing that I noticed was this white figure that looked like a plastic figure. And um, it reminded me of the vision that I had about the nuclear event. I had this vision about New York City, and it seemed like there was a nuclear event, but I'm not really sure. Anyway... In that vision, I saw this white balloon man. He was like white, and he was—he seemed like a balloon figure. So in this vision last night, again, I saw this white plastic figure, only this time he was smaller. He was more life-sized. In that other vision, he was huge, and he didn't look like a normal human. But in this vision, um, he was actually regular-sized. And he had one arm, but he no face or anything, just white, like plastic, just plastic white thing. And he had one arm kind of like pointing at the ground or something. Okay, so I just ignored that because I was looking for Jesus and I knew that wasn't Jesus. And then I finally found Jesus and then he went over and he kneeled down on the ground and was looking at the ground. Well... In that spot where he was kneeling down on the ground, I thought there was a campfire there because in another vision that he'd shown me, and I think it was like two weeks ago or something, he showed me um, a Native American man sitting in front of a campfire and in that same spot. So he went over to that spot where that was, and he was looking down at the ground. So my first thought was, oh, he's kneeling in front of a campfire. But then he motioned for me to come over there, and I went over there, and I looked at what he was looking at, and it wasn't. It was just sand. And he then he put his hand in front of it, and I knew that he was going to write something in the sand. And some of you guys will remember last October... He showed me, um, I uploaded a video last, on Oct I think it was October 13th, 2011, of um, he had shown me that he was chopping wood and he had this big heavy coat on and there was snow everywhere. And then he had gone over and he had drawn in the snow and he drew a circle with a line through it and then a spiral with these frays coming out that looked like a hurricane and then he mounded the snow up in a volcano. Um, and it, unfortunately, I can't remember. Oh, and I hate myself for this. And again, I know some of you guys are keep telling me to write my visions down. And I just... Oh, I wish that I had written this down. Because when I had that vision last year, I remember that I knew exactly what order he had drawn those things. And I knew... It was either right to left or left to right, and I, and I can't remember the order anymore now. And I'm not sure if I put it in my, I'm not sure if I, actually uploaded it in that video. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that because now I realize that it's actually meaningful, because I think he's showing things that are happening year after year. Because remember, last year it was fulfilled, on October 29th, 2011, with the Connecticut power outage. Um, the, the early snow and the power outage to 2 million people without power for over a week. And then exactly one year later, on October 29th, 2012, it was Hurricane Sandy. So now I'm kind of freaking out and I'm wishing that I would have act specifically logged that in order. But whatever. Anyway, so last night he did something similar. He went over and he, I knew he was going to write something in the sand. So let me show you what he wrote. All right, this is the first thing that he did. He did dot, 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 and then he drew a half circle over here. 
That's the first thing. The next thing that he did was um, he, again, this half circle was still there. And then he drew a smaller half circle over here. And believe it or not, last night I had no idea what this was. Now I think I might understand it, but last night I didn't. And then the next thing that he drew was um, two half circles like this. Okay, and then he drew this line going through the two half circles. Okay, so this morning I was um, thinking about what he had shown me last night and I was trying to remember it so that I could tell you guys right away. And, and suddenly it hit me. When I remembered this, you know, I just realized, oh my gosh, is he showing me the earth and the moon and something going between the earth and the moon? And I, I swear to you, last night I had no clue what this was. And now I think maybe that's what it is. But I, I don't know. The next thing that he showed me was this. He did three lines. Oh, and by the way, he did another thing, and I can't remember... I can't remember when he did this, but let me just show you this one first, and I'll, I'll explain it later. He, sh he, he Then he drew three lines, and then he drew this circle up here. I'm sorry, I don't know if it was that big. He drew this circle over here. I know that's really bad. And then I can't remember. He did something over here, but I can't remember what it was exactly, but I think it was a line going down but I can't remember exactly this I remember fine but I can't I'm not really sure about this one okay so then he I can't I can't remember if he did this over the um, the other thing that he drew or if he did it over this but he took his palms and he he put his two hands I'm sorry that's bad drawing I know he took his two hands and put his palms facing down over the drawing but like I said I can't remember if, the, if it was this drawing or the other drawing and he, he turned his palms up and then put his palms down and then his palms up and then his palms down and he did that a couple of times and my first thought was open and shut but I'm not really sure what it meant but then I saw then I saw that this thing Maybe, I'm not really sure about this, but I thought maybe that he was shutting the lid on this thing like it was similar to a laptop with a lid, you know, like the laptop cover, and then he shut the cover. And that's what it seemed like he did, but I'm not really sure about that. Um, but I am sure about the palms and him opening, you know, his palms raised up and then down and then like that. I, I'm sure about that. But like I said, I don't know if it was over this picture or the other picture. Okay, so then he erased that. He, he like wiped the sand with his hand. And um, and then he took to like erase that to say, okay, I'm going to show you something new now. And then he took in his two hands, he had a stick, a small stick. And he broke the stick in half. And then he laid the broken stick on the sand. And then he covered the sand. He covered the stick with the sand. So that it was completely covered by the sand. Then he took a lighter in his right hand and he and he lit the lighter over the over the sand that was covering the stick and nothing happened. Then he made a volcano. He, he he formed the sand into a volcano over that broken stick 
And then he took his lighter in his right hand and he lit the lighter over the top of the volcano that was covering the, the broken stick. And then the volcano lit on fire. So it seemed like he was it seemed like he was showing me that gas was coming out of the volcano. Okay. That's all I remember of what he showed me last night. I think I fell asleep right at like right after that. But um I what I I wanted to share with you this dream that I had cuz it's really funny. I I had this dream like it was either last week or the I, yeah, I think it was last week. And it's so obviously symbolic of the sheep and the goats, but I I swear to you that at the time I was dreaming this cuz this was a a dream that I had while I was sleeping. And while I was dreaming it, I had no clue of the symbolic, you know, I did, didn't even recognize this obvious symbolism of this dream. But as I was dreaming it, it was just totally real to me. But anyway, it's just, it's funny, kind of. It's kind of not funny, but it, I don't know. I'll just tell you. So in my dream, there was this man, and he had this big old fat sheep in his arm, in his right, I think it was his right arm, but I'm not really sure. And in his other arm, he had a big old goat, and they had the, he was holding them really tight, and they were upright, and it was really funny looking. But then the goat got away, and the goat went running off, and went and climbed up onto this really, really high ledge. And I said, oh no, the goat got away. I need to go save the goat, because the goat's going to get hurt up there. And so I went chasing after the goat and I was climbing up this, trying to get up to that ledge where the goat was. And I know this sounds so, it sounds stupid when you're hearing it, but in my dream I was actually really scared because I was really, really high up on this ledge and it was actually really, really scary in my dream. And I remember I kind of stopped because I was looking up at that. The goat was even higher than I was on this little ledge. And I was looking up at the goat and I was like, oh man, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I can go up there. So I was just kind of standing there for a second. It was really scary. And this person came up behind me. And she was just standing there behind me on this ledge just looking at me. And I was like, oh, excuse me, I'll just get out of your your way so you can go past me. And she didn't go past me. She just stood there and looked at me. And, and I was like, it was kind of silly, actually, because there was no way she could have passed me. I mean, that ledge was really skinny. But And I felt this kindness from her. Well, actually... I felt this immense kindness from her, but at the same time, it was sadness, and it was really deep sadness. Um, it was just really, really deep, deep sadness that I felt from her. And I just remember looking at her and thinking, wow, she's really sad. And, um, but I, I was more immersed in this goat that was up there on that ledge and I was trying to get to the goat trying to save the goat and I just came to this realization that I could not save the goat and I just and it took me a while and then I finally was like I can't do this I'm gonna have to somebody else is gonna have to do it and then I just went back down well after I woke up it was so obvious to me because those of you that been, that have been with me for a long time, you know that for the longest time I was so focused on speaking to the goats and chasing after the goats and trying to convince the people that can't understand that something's happening and that they're in danger and trying to convince them. And recently I've just come to the realization that I just can't do it. Um, but... And so I've started focusing on the people that actually are listening instead of the ones that aren't. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because it was just, I thought it was really amazing. I'm out of time. Bye.